observing the heavens was a disturbing influence, the powers of the order of the cosmos become tremendously important. Moved at a mathematically determinable rate through the fixed constellations. Certain numbers begin to become very important. The number 432 that occurs in all kinds of relationships. And then, total transformation in mythology takes place. Sono molto onorato che voi abbiate accettato questo mio invito a partecipare a questa riunione. I did find a letter of Giuseppe Verdi written to the music committee establishing a pitch for the orchestras in Italy in that year. If this is the scientific tuning, music is a universal language, so we should have the same tuning for all orchestra, and let's adopt it. Based on this letter, the Schiller Institute has launched a resolution which was endorsed by 2,000 singers, including Pavarotti, Renata Tebaldi, Piero Capuccilli, Mirella Freni, Alfredo Kraus, I mean the most famous singers endorse this campaign. Who knows, maybe the Verdi tuning will be part of the general change of society which we all look forward to. Most people are not aware of them, consciously. They may be affected by them, but they're not really aware of them. The Schiller Institute took up this fight around this question of the right tuning. Giuseppe Verdi's insistence, legislation passed in Italy. There are many reasons for this. Health of the human voice, although that's an important aspect of it. Vogliamo fare un esempio? to lower the tuning, otherwise we will never have great voices again. Every town in Italy has a street or square named after the great opera composer Giuseppe Verdi. Verdi turned grand opera into nationalist propaganda. Verdi, the national hero, was elected deputy in the Italian parliament. I 
dire che quando ho provato il 432 per me è stata una scoperta piacevole del suono, del colore, della voce e rispetto anche per lo strumento vocale. It was amazing the difference and how much more round the music was with the Verdi tuning. Los contraltos y los tenores están desapareciendo. Salían sangrando la gente de ópera que cantaba, ¿sabes? La voz sufre muchísimo menos. Una ópera que puede durar dos o tres horas, al final acaban algunos sangrando. Por eso que se decía la gran voz verdiana. In 2011, the brilliant guitar duo named Charisma was founded by two exceptional classical guitar players, which impressed Andrea Bocelli, the world-renowned tenor from Italy, and the duo were invited to be guests at Andrea Bocelli's world tour. Hertz is very, very important to us. We want to bring this project forward. We want to engage as much as many musicians also as possible to work with us in our project and uh, bring this um, frequency forward. Hertz player application is an application for Android and iOS devices which can transform your music from your iTunes. I'm using a very good algorithm by a, a very company that's actually that's their uh, specialty. When I started to really listen it's like after you go back to 440 you, you, you start to it's like something is not right. It's like organic and not organic. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. This is the next step of music. Of course. Of sound. The greatest singers in the world are gospel singers. We recorded the whole album in 432 tuning instead of 440 because it's nature's frequency. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God. I, I can hear it too. And one day, 
we decided to put the birds on the front of that song. Started recording the birds. She did like four or five different voice memos of the birds singing. When she came into the house, she noticed on the fifth pass, there was something odd in the background, a tone. We have a good friend, Mr. Gordon Mote. He's the, one of the best piano players, plays on all the Nashville records. And Gordon's been blind from birth and he has perfect pitch. And he has told us that sometimes when he's sitting outside, he can hear this tone that the earth actually gives off. And he said, I think it's a miracle that you were able to capture the tone that I hear when I'm sitting outside in nature. That's the earth's frequency that I hear. When everything is really, really quiet outside, there's a pitch that you hear. She heard a sound that was that exact pitch that the earth seems to be in tune with. Listen again, when the birds start singing, you'll hear a tone right before the piano kicks in. This project is going to do so much for the healing of a lot of hearts and souls perfect C note in 432, which is exactly the key and the tuning that we recorded that song in. And so we put it, um, yeah, we'd already finished that song. And uh, so we just felt like it was God's confirmation that we were doing the right thing. The night is fading, the earth is waking up again. Scientific experiments are proving that birds sing and human voices naturally sing in 432. The birds are leaning, all creation singing nature's Even the speed of light and measurements of the planet, sun and moon are near perfect multiplications in 432. This is not a new concept, but it's new to us. I'm going to play you a note in 440. And then I'm going to play you the same note in 432, all right? Here's 432. 440. Mm -hmm. Everybody sing that note. Mm -hmm. Thumbs up when you got it. Mm -hmm. That's 432. Mm -hmm. So it just sounds like it's a little flat, but it, it is 8 hertz difference. I believe music is a big part of our demise in our nation, in our world of the youth, and of what's going wrong with our, our world. The kind of music that we listen to can certainly have an impact, but even the frequency of the kind of music that we're listening to, it's crazy. What is the frequency that best soothes us, or calms us, or heals us? Solar Theory is to create music that elevates consciousness and brings light to issues of sustainability on our planet. We've been hard at work for two years crafting the absolute highest quality tones, sounds, and frequencies for the healing and expansion of consciousness of all. want to calm the stressors, calm the nervous system by using the sounds, um, concentrating on the breathing, and then through that, space is opened up between the thoughts. And in that space, in that new environment, that very deep theta brain state, calming environment, the body can allow healing 
those healing energies to come through without the mind or the ego interrupting that process. I'm a different person uh, walking out of this experience. The moment those two musicians started to engage in their flow, all of that tension kind of just washed away and made space for like this deep spaciousness. It made me feel comfortable and safe and close so I could open up and really let the sounds and the vibrations and the music flow through me. I've been working in 432 Hertz professionally for the last nine years. I have nine solo 432 Hertz albums. I've also been a session singer for 30 years. I've been singing professionally for around 30 years. I've worked with lots of different producers over the years. Four three two allows the voice to fly. It allows magic. Four three two is a natural frequency, which aligns to the human voice perfectly. When I sing in the old concert pitch of four forty, I have to practice for days to get my vocal cords tuned unnaturally. And I also have to take breaks in 432. I don't really need to practice. All I need to do is just show up. When I'm singing in 432, I can sing soprano and I can sing contralto, which is at the bottom end of the scale. So it allows my voice as a vocalist to just purely open up and really fly and have an incredible tone that I could never ever get in standard pitch tuning of 440 hertz. I teach workshops around the world. I go to sacred places and sacred sites and I use my voice and I sing in 432 hertz. I've worked with brass bands. I worked with the Royal Irish uh, Regimental Band and also educating the producers that I work with as to this frequency and how it really helps my voice. So 
been very fortunate. I've worked with Peter Rees, has worked with Enigma and Sandra and lots of really huge artists. The album was called Language of Light and he produced the whole thing in 432, having never heard of it before. Derek and I produced one of my best sellers in my whole career. Derek has produced two incredible books called Mathematical Music. Really strongly, highly recommend the and I'm very, very honored now to be working with absolute musical genius, Craig Pruess. I recognize the resonant value of different frequencies in nature that come, and especially when it's lined with the animal kingdom. A432 is dominant in that, so why not go for these consonant tones? Namaste. couple of years doing all the Shiva chants, Rama chants, uh, Devi chants, and really getting into the Indian aspect of A432. I've been aware of the A432 for some time, but I was a bit alarmed at the fanaticism in the community. It's so beautiful to be alive at this time in the world. We couldn't have been talking about these things 20 years ago. I'm so happy that I've been able to bring it more into the mainstream. It fills me full of a lot of uh, hope. I absolutely advocate working in 432 hertz. It saves your vocal cords, helps my message, not only as a musician and a vocalist, but also the sound healing elements that I bring into my work. 432 actually helps people relax, rejuvenate, restore. It's been lovely to be asked to be part of this documentary on 432 because it's very, very important for humanity. Ooh, and and 432 really does shift and change. Passaram três anos. Três anos que até se parecem dez de tantas coisas lindas que aconteceram. O Awaken Love apoiou e esteve presente em muitas iniciativas alinhadas ao propósito de trazer a consciência amorosa para o nosso dia a dia. Criamos uma rede que não para de se expandir e espalhar o amor por onde passa. Três anos nessa jornada, vendo florescer um movimento global em direção ao despertar do amor. Uma coisa bem interessante da Waking Love Band, que é a banda que acompanha Sri Prembaba, é que a gente só toca na frequência 432 Hz. Essa frequência ela é uma frequência suave, é uma frequência doce, é a frequência natural da Terra. Então ela vai direto no coração de quem escuta. A pessoa que escuta o nosso som, ela pode realmente se elevar através da música. Eu percebo que 
percebi que esse festival também está iluminando a integração entre o Oriente e o Ocidente através da música transcendental né? perceber esse bajan samba bajan reggae né? mantra samba, mantra reggae eu sinto que isso é um símbolo de um fenômeno que mais necessitamos nesse momento que é a união The violin was screaming into my ear, and I, I didn't understand why. Probably the violin is not my instrument. So I decided to take another diploma in viola. And also the viola was screaming. <laughs> it wasn't the violin, and it wasn't the viola. It was the frequency. I started doing everything at 432, teaching, playing. Every single time that I have a student that has to give an exam, I teach them at 432 and they know it. And after they have to go to the exam, the piano is tuned at 440, and I have to tune the violin at 440. Oh my God, I mean, it's, it's like, I don't want to die. It's, it's so aggressive, it gives me the feeling of uh, acidity. Uh, aggressive, really, back to that feeling of screaming. Goebbels, I guess, he made experimentations on soldiers at 432, 440, 450. The very same piece from the very same recording at 440, 450, their heartbeat rate were raising. So their blood pressure were raising. Their aggressivity were raising. So if the frequency has this power, there must be a way to use this power for good reasons too. This is a fresh moment, you know. This is a moment of awareness. People is waking up. 20 years ago, when the Schiller Institute started, huge names, I was shocked. Tebaldi, and I was like, oh my God. Now you go on YouTube, you go on, on Facebook, there is a Russian guy. I have a colleague in Bulgaria, in Brazil. Italy is full of people crazy about the 432. So it's spreading so fast and so quick. I can't see myself doing anything else, really. And it's not because I'm here now, but I'm here now because of this. It's the other way around. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the Camerata Gimignani is just one part of the Gimignani project, which is quite articulated project. It involves the creation of a camerata, which is a chamber orchestra. It involves the creation of an academy. It involves a piano, trio.
Da molto tempo mi sto dedicando allo studio delle frequenze di guarigione energetica. Sperimento da svariati anni la frequenza di riferimento dell'Averdiano a 432 Hz e la utilizzo per le mie composizioni con risultati straordinari in quanto tangibili. Esso infatti è il risultato di un lungo periodo di ricerche nell'ambito energetico e vibrazionale. In Oriente, per esempio, troviamo i monaci tibetani con le campane, i gong, i cembali. In Occidente abbiamo gli sciamani con i flauti nativi e i tamburi sciamanici. In Australia ricordiamo gli aborigini con i loro digeridù e in Africa ci sono le tribù con i loro ritmi ancestrali ottenuti con tamburi come ad esempio lo djembe o il tamburo parlante. Nei bagni di suono utilizziamo molteplici di questi strumenti etnici, tutti intonati a 432 Hz. Nei bagni vibrazionali Martina ed io usiamo costantemente i suoni armonici creati dalle vocali, uniti alla nostra intenzione di armonizzazione per ripristinare l'equilibrio energetico della persona trattata. Sono assolutamente persuaso che il suono sarà la medicina del futuro. Really felt like uh, water inside of my body, like shaking up, like boiling, like I was inside of a kettle or something. And it was quite amazing because as soon as you started, I felt grounded, really grounded. And uh, yeah, very lucky to be here, so thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> something really serious, we are really um, understanding this in our work now. Music tuned in 42 Hz, listen every day, in our everyday life, in the radio, in, in the instruments, in the CD you buy. How, oh, in Ozora, <laughs> yes, how oh, would it have influenced the human evolution? Psytrance, so 144 beats per minute. 8 hertz is the middle tuning of life itself, but also of the universe. It's not just the Schumann resonance. The hydrogen is 90% of the universe. 
is already tuned at 8 hertz. Stop 8 cycles per second in life and it dies within a short period of time. MDMA engages a two hour phase entrainment of the brain hemispheres at 8 cycles per second. Accessing that source code in our song, in our music, in our practice is the Renaissance. Psy trance in that sense is a massive emergence of the healing of the species in technological information overload. We are the shamanic pioneers for the sleepers of this modernity. Psy trance concerts occurring at the same time in different locales, tuned at 432 hertz. 432 hertz the tempos and 8 hertz, the 72 or 144 BPM is the carrier wave, it's like a microwave that enables the 8 hertz to be woven with the intent in the cells. This is the future, it's inevitable, this is a better trance, a better dance, a better party. Certain composers have been tuning to 432 hertz and using 8 hertz. A few of them use this information publicly. Almanoid is one, so another is Merkaba. Because when you speak your truth, things that are not true get burned away. But it wasn't until 2007 when I went to a festival like this, with the Australian version, which is predominantly Psytrance, and then I had this like total epiphany of like, wow, this is my tribe and this music is amazing. So that's when I got full power into my work about projects. My vision for the label has been more about it being a portal for creativity. It has to hit me in this like soul space immediately. I can usually feel within like five seconds whether it's going to be good or not. You know, when I listen to a song, it's just like this immediate yes or no, and it comes from the intelligence of the body of not listening with my head. Amazing sound in your creation comes from your passion and devotion to the music and to the art. I highly recommend this book for any audio alchemist who's interested in looking deep into frequency and scales and all sorts of magic within music. You can actually get a master's degree in sound therapy now. Just about every major hospital in the country has its own sound therapy department. In science, we know there are three modalities of healing. One is electromagnetic waves. Two, sound. And the third one, a static magnet. This massager head utilizes three modalities of healing science has known for years. Several years ago, the guy who invested the money in this study saw me speak at the Tesla Tech conference. He conducted a test over a two or three month period of time and the plants actually grew two to three times faster than the control. He decided to spend the money, the $6,000, and have the chakra sounds tested in an FDA approved lab to see how it's going to affect the body. Only listen to the chakras from root to crown three times and that's it. And we saw these phenomenal results. That was conducted by three doctors. It was a $6,000 study done on the A432 now, this graphic here is probably one of the most interesting I've come across in my research. It was originally sourced from Stanford University. The one that's doubled, so you got the one, two, four, eight, so forth. This is the doubling. And then across the top here, you got the three, six. This is the tripling. So you got the thirds and you got the doubling. When you take those and you multiply this out into this matrix here, you've got the 432 smack dab in the middle. You have in this blue box, you see the speed of light, 432 squared. When you take the 432 and you square it, you get 186,624 nautical miles per second. Light doesn't travel in a straight line. Light curves. It travels in a curvature. This is an entire octave of C. All right, this is an entire octave here of G, and then D, and then A and E. These are all octaves. And this also follows the circle of fifths. This is a perfect circle of fifths as it goes across here. And you multiply the 432 by Pythagoras' whole numbers, you get 
every single one of the numbers that's in this matrix. From this CD here, Ben Scott and Krista Mitchell, here are the tones in the back, all the tracks. All right, these chakra bowls are handmade by Tibetan monks, and they only use their hearing and their feeling. But these are the notes, these are the frequencies, and these are the chakras. <laughs> You got the 216, 432, or 864. Those are all octaves of one another. They're all the note of A, so you can use whichever one you want. All works out mathematically beautiful, musically beautiful. It sounds beautiful, it feels beautiful, it's mathematically coherent. So that is why I've come to the conclusion on all these chakra frequencies. The efficacy of these tones that I've seen in my lab, I've seen tremendous healing, reduced inflammation in the body, reduced emotional stress in the frontal lobes, and it works out mathematically. This image is taken from John Stuart Reed's cymatic experiment conducted to show the geometry that the pure 432 hertz tone creates. The triangular shaped hole in the middle is created by the 432 hertz sound and it is in this exact shape of what is known as the trion ray, rediscovered by Michael R. Evans. This three-sided shape tessellates to create all the rest of the platonic solids. This shows that the 432 is in acoustical and structural harmony with the pulsing of light as it travels. 432 hertz tone cymatics is telling us is that there is something going through here that is creating these ripplings, okay? So I'll fill these in with 3D spheres, come together, and we get this here. You see how these look like leaves? This cymatics experiment is used by researchers to visualize related geometric patterns that specific frequencies create. It consists of a speaker playing a frequency underneath a thin metal sheet holding ordinary sand. As you can see, the sand is responding to the sound it is receiving and creating a geometric pattern that is particular to the individual frequency. You will notice that the sand is only creating defined geometric patterns in response to Pythagorean interval of the 432. From formlessness comes form. Just add sound. The cymoscope is a new type of scientific instrument that makes sound visible. And the whole thing is precision engineered. So this is a completely new type of instrument. I've built a number of them for scientists around the world. We've developed the Cymoscope app for both Apple and Android platforms. What you notice in the Cymoscope app is that when you play any of the notes in 440 tuning, and then you switch to 432 tuning and you do a comparison, the pitch which is the least stable in the cymatic patterns is 440. The number 432 hertz divides beautifully equally, you know, way back to one hertz. So there's a neatness in the mathematics. 432 hertz is a really interesting subject. I had the opportunity to lie in the sarcophagus in the king's chamber. It's so quiet in there, you can hear the sound of your own breathing. It's so wonderfully reverberant. As a sound and acoustics engineer, I naturally wanted to know about the resonance of this granite box. While I lay in the sarcophagus, I made a glissando like this. Ooh. 
one particular frequency, my whole body was kind of washed by the sound. What I did was I had a PVC membrane manufactured that would fit exactly across the top of the sarcophagus. I had a speaker positioned in the bottom of the sarcophagus. At certain frequencies, what looked like ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs start appearing. This one here, called the jet pillar, literally like a moving snake on the surface of the membrane. There's the cymatic saw loop. Here's the cymatic sun god. Here is the cymatic eye a whole series of these images appearing. And the antiquities inspector said, how do you do that? How do you do that? And I said, I don't know, it's just happening. Three weeks before I was due to go out to the pyramids, this particular mission, I injured my lower back quite badly, and I was in a lot of pain. And about 20 minutes or so into the experiment, I suddenly realized that there was no pain in my back. All the pain had gone. It never came back. There was a real healing that took place. There is a definite correlation between the iconography of these ancient cultures and the musical instruments which they had invented. When played his didgeridoo into my device, up on the membrane came these are absolutely aboriginal icons. The two other instruments were a Celtic horn. When he played that, what we got up on the membrane, we got Celtic knotwork. And then he had this amazing instrument about 15 feet long, this Tibetan horn. And what came on the membrane was a beautiful Tibetan mandala. Let's imagine, zoom in on one water molecule in any part, you would find the same thing. You can literally see the pattern on the surface of the cell. Well, now we realize the sounds all around us, the environment, listening to music, all those sounds passing through your body, particularly the low frequency sounds, providing structure within the fluid in your body. And so that could have huge implications for medical science amplify the song of that tumor cell, you're then sending them back. What would happen is the tumor would implode and would be literally destroyed. Sound was present right from the beginning of the Big Bang. It even organized the matter in the universe, or so the cosmologists believe, that sound is primordial force. It's impossible to have light without sound. The future in sound and geometry is to be able to see the shapes of sound. Shape and sound relate to frequency vibration. All my life I thought I was going to become a doctor and then I just decided to, I renunciated everything at the age of 18, I just decided to give everything I owned away. I went and lived with Aboriginal people for two years and I didn't see white people for two years. Something got transmitted to me beyond the spoken word by living with them and for the first time living in cycles with the ocean and floods. And that's where I believe I first learnt sacred geometry. The first book I wrote is called The True Value of Pi equals 3.144. So we know that Pi has another value but it's never been released. The mathematics of curvature is in error by that little fraction, but that's enough to create distortion. So anything to do with circle and engineering is based on pi. So all mathematics of satellites, mobile phones, it's all based on understanding pi. If pi is wrong, then everything we know in our history for two and a half thousand years is incorrect. The reason why I'm teaching all of this is that the next generation children are going to grow up with this acute awareness that Sacred geometry is a universal language and that we need to correct the true value of pi. But something happened a hundred years ago. Someone decided to take out all the beautiful stuff that made mathematics a sacred science. Mm -hmm. And I found out that the people who write the curriculum are fundamental Christians in Brisbane. Anything that's not Christian is deleted. So all I'm trying to do is create an opportunity for the next generation of kids to come in and learn meaningful, beautiful visual mathematics. Rudolf Steiner 60 years ago had a, a vision of a spiritual education and we nurture the soul and we get them to draw spirals and, you know, and all this beautiful stuff. Well, this is the kind of maths that we want. I know my mission. My mission is I'm here to introduce a new curriculum. That, that's Jane. Oh, who's Jane? Oh, Jane, Jane's got this thing about turning numbers into pictures. 
I believe that your child really needs to learn what we call Vedic mathematics. So 3,000 years ago, the yogis were sitting down and you could ask them any complex mathematical question and they just used their feminine right brain to see the answer by understanding shape, pattern recognition, and they invented the zero and the decimal point. 3,000 years ago, these remote yogis on the hilltop created a highly intelligent language of numbers. When a child learns these basic 16 formulas, it literally switches them on. By teaching children visual content like sacred geometry, it creates what I call whole brain learning. Shape is the future language, is a universal language. And that's why we have to teach children visual content. So that's my job is to take the esoteric information, all the research I do, and transduce it down, bring it right down to the level of a 13-year-old so that they can say, oh, wow, it's beautiful. In India, there's one billion people that as soon as they hear the word 108, they put their hands together and no one had ever explained the mathematical origin of why 108. Right. So I was the first person in the world I connected 108 to the living mathematics of nature, saying that the mathematics in our cells, in pine cones, and the distances of the planets from the sun is encoded or encoded in the numerical vibration of 108. And that suddenly made them feel oh, that we have a tangible connection now to 108, which is life, which is flowers. And I received an email and um, they wrote, my name is Jane 108. I was just Jane. Well, it's a good so name, I, so stick with it. I think it's a great yeah, name. Thank, <laughs> yeah, thank you. And I needed to explain that I didn't make that up. It just actually happened. Observing the heavens was very important because it was from that that you determined your planting time. Not the reaping, because you reaped when the crops were ripe, but when do you plant? You must know your seasons perfectly. As a result of recording observations of the heavens, it was uh, presently realized that the planets, which formerly had been thought of as a disturbing influence, moved at a mathematically determinable rate through the fixed constellations. And here we begin to get mathematical mythologies where certain numbers, enormous numbers, begin to become very important. There's a number of 432,000 that occurs in all kinds of relationships, for example. And then total transformation of mythology takes place 